2024 Toyota Land Cruiser Redefining Off-Road Prowess with Advanced Technology Saga of the Toyota Land Cruiser's exit and subsequent return to the U.S. market post-2020 has been a topic of much discussion. However, it appears this departure was merely a strategic maneuver orchestrated by Toyota's North American division. Rather than immediately transitioning to the new 300 series cruiser chassis like the rest of the world, Toyota Motor North America deliberately held back, opting instead for the closely related 250 series chassis. Contrary to concerns expressed online, this decision to embrace the Land Cruiser Prado configuration has proven to be a boon. The 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser emerges as a superior iteration, thanks to this deliberate shift in approach. A significant aspect of this improvement lies in the pricing strategy. Consider the Lexus LX600, a notably hefty and pricey luxury SUV priced well into six figures. Had the Land Cruiser followed suit with the 300 series, it would likely have mirrored the LX600's extravagant pricing. However, by sticking with the 250 series, the 2024 Land Cruiser arrives with more manageable dimensions and a significantly reduced price point. For instance, the base model, named in homage to its North American debut year, starts at a reasonable $57,345. Even the well-appointed volume-selling Land Cruiser grade comes in at a modest $63,345, making it an accessible option for many. For those seeking exclusive features, the limited-time, only first edition is available at $76,345. This shift in direction reflects a response to the desires of loyal fans, resulting in a Land Cruiser that is not only more affordable but also more attuned to the needs of its audience. Is it truly recognizable as a Land Cruiser? Absolutely. This assertion holds particularly true when considering that it, along with the LX600 and Lexus GX, all share the same TNGF chassis. And when we say same, we mean precisely that. The trio boasts identical dimensions, with a wheelbase measuring 112.2 inches. Their suspension setups, comprising control arm fronts and live axles located by four-link and pan hard rears, are also identical. Any discrepancies in track widths are minimal, primarily stemming from stylistic and tire clearance considerations rather than fundamental mechanical distinctions. Moreover, all three feature full-time four-wheel drive with a lockable torsion center differential seamlessly transitioning from on-road friendly all-wheel drive to off-road ready four-wheel drive at the touch of a button. Essentially, their disparities primarily lie in the powertrains and body designs rather than the underlying chassis. Despite being downsized, the Land Cruiser has been aptly resized. Among the trio, it boasts the shortest length, measuring 193.8 inches from nose to tail. This reduced length is largely attributed to a shorter front overhang, resulting in an impressive approach angle of 32 degrees, surpassing the GX's modest 26 degrees. In contrast, the LX lags significantly with a paltry 21 degree angle, rendering it unworthy of further discussion. With a width of 77.9 inches, the Land Cruiser closely aligns with its counterparts. However, both the Land Cruiser and GX share a 250 series body styling that is notably narrower than the LX-300 series at the doors. This narrower profile facilitates easier maneuvering in parking lots and garages. Furthermore, their hoods and front fenders are sculpted to enhance forward visibility, while the lower cut door side glass improves the downward view. Coupled with an upright driving position, this design affords occupants a commanding view of both road and trail, with ample headroom inside to accommodate various preferences, including the option to keep a pith helmet on if desired. The Land Cruiser is strictly configured as a two-row, five-passenger vehicle. This design choice isn't a result of transitioning to the 250 series body, as the three-row GX is available. Beyond aiming for cost efficiency and appealing to avid off-road enthusiasts, there's a practical reason for this decision, which surprisingly relates to the vehicle's powertrain. Featuring the torquiest and most efficient setup among its counterparts, the Land Cruiser deviates from the twin-turbocharged 3.4-liter V, 6, and 10-speed automatic found in the LX and GX models. Instead, it adopts Toyota's iForce Max hybrid powertrain. 
This system comprises a turbocharged 2.4-liter inline-four engine paired with a robust electric motor situated between it and a traditional 8-speed automatic transmission. While a Tacoma TRD off-road equipped with the 278 horsepower Turbo 4 without electric assistance is impressive, the addition of the Max E motor elevates the cruiser's performance to 326 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque, the latter exceeding any prior North American Land Cruiser model. This powertrain, shared with the TRD Pro and Trailhunter Tacomas, exhibits ample torque, evident during freeway off-ramp acceleration and steep off-road climbs, negating the need for the torque multiplication of low range in previous iterations. Despite its hybrid configuration, the new Cruiser is far from resembling a Prius. Unlike typical Toyota hybrids designed for maximizing fuel economy, the iForce Max is engineered to enhance performance. Nevertheless, fuel efficiency benefits from the ability to recapture energy during deceleration and redeploy it later. Consequently, the new Land Cruiser achieves an EPA-rated 23 miles per gallon combined, 22 city 25 highway, marking a significant 64% improvement over the old 5.7-liter V8's 14 miles per gallon combined rating. We anticipate the new cruiser falling slightly short of the 6.2 second zero to 60 miles per hour acceleration time recorded for the GX 550, given the GX's superior output of 349 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque, even though the GX weighs about 100 pounds more. However, these differences in powertrain and other aspects do impact the maximum towing capacity. While the GX, powered solely by internal combustion, can haul nearly 9,100 pounds, the cruiser's hybrid system limits its towing capability to 6,000 pounds. The absence of a third row in the Land Cruiser, and the unlikelihood of it being added unless Toyota installs a different engine, is directly related to the placement of the nickel-metal hydride battery pack beneath the cargo floor. This positioning raises the load floor, resulting in a slight reduction in cargo space behind the rear seat compared to the GX. Nonetheless, the hybrid system offers a 2,400-watt 120-volt outlet in the rear, surpassing the GX's 400-watt capacity. Furthermore, even the most affordable 1958 model comes equipped with electronically controlled rear differential lock, downhill assist, and crawl control, features only available on the high-end overtrail version of the GX. Additionally, all cruiser variants come standard with 18-inch wheels and tires boasting substantial sidewall height. The 1958 model sports 245 divided by 70 are minus 18 tires, standing at approximately 32 inches tall, while the Land Cruiser and first edition grades feature 265 divided by 70 are minus 18 Toyo Open Country at three tires, measuring 33 inches tall. While the Land Cruiser grade offers the option of 20-inch wheels, sacrificing sidewall height for $1,240 seems incongruous with the vehicle's character. When comparing to the GX, subtle suspension distinctions cast the Land Cruiser in a favorable perspective, albeit with a discerning eye. While the $69,250 GX 550 over trail boasts sophisticated adaptive variable suspension, AVS, dampers, the $63,345 Land Cruiser opts for simpler passive dampers. Despite this variance, the Cruiser delivers a generally well-balanced ride on this setup. Importantly, for those inclined to customize their Cruiser's suspension, the absence of AVS units means they won't incur unnecessary expenses by replacing them, and won't have to contend with potential AVS malfunction indicators. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.